At this past weekend Star Wars celebration, several actors from the Star Wars movies took to the stage to celebrate 40 years of Star Wars. They included notables like Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill, as well as returning new characters like Daisy Ridley and John Boyega. Even actors from the prequel era who couldn't be there in attendance sent in a videotaped greeting, which included Qui-Gon Jinn's Liam Neeson and Mace Windu Samuel L. Jackson. But one actor noticeably absent was none other than Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, Ewan McGregor. McGregor is often rumored to be pushing for a standalone Obi-Wan movie himself, with fans also hoping he would return, a premise that gained steam when he returned to voice Obi-Wan and raise Force Vision in The Force Awakens. So why didn't he film a greeting to send in? Why didn't he show up for the 40th anniversary? John, what do you think the reasons are as to why Ewan McGregor didn't show up at Star Wars Celebration? To me, this was the question of Star Wars Celebration this year. It, it was an amazing event, it was great, and it was wonderful. But I'm telling you, the absence of Ewan McGregor stands out like a sore thumb. Because here at the 40th anniversary, you are bringing out guys like Hayden Christensen, his first time back really in the Star Wars family. It was so, it was really cool to see that good Canadian kid get that warm reaction from the audience that he did, right? And all this kind of stuff. And something not everybody could be there. Liam Neeson, who was in one film, if you don't count his voice in the second, they, he sends in a video message. You know, you got Mace Windu himself, Samuel L. Jackson, who's not that, doesn't have that much screen time in these films, but he's in one. No major actor had as much screen time in that prequel trilogy than Ewan McGregor. He was the heart and soul of that first trilogy, right? And he's not there, and he doesn't even send in a recorded message. We know, it's not like, oh, he, him and Lucasfilm must be like... He loves Lucasfilm. He wants to do more Star Wars movies. So to me, that, that's why after the first panel... And his uncle was there. And his uncle, yeah, who did have problems with Lucasfilm. Like, Dennis Lawson was there, too. So that's why there were some people like me who were like, when he wasn't there at the 40th anniversary, I was like, I am more convinced than ever. If he's not showing up on this first panel, he's going to show up on Saturday or Sunday, and they're going to announce an Obi-Wan movie, because it's just ridiculous that he not be there. And yet he didn't. And so that is the big floating, cr like even if you want to announce an Obi-Wan movie at D23, why not be there? I mean, Hayden came out. I mean, I, I don't know, what. When, how did you see that whole thing? And what do you think the reasons are that Hugh McGregor was not there, not even mentioned? I think we're all, not just people at this table, I think that everybody is overthinking this thing just a little bit. I think that what the, one of the main things with you and McGregor not being there is I think that they probably don't have anything to announce right now with him. I think that, yeah, he probably could have sent in a, a message or he probably maybe could have been there. They could have explained why he wasn't there. But I don't think it necessarily means, well, that's because they're saving this for D23 and he's going to have an announcement in an Obi-Wan movie. That's certainly, right. That certainly could happen. But I don't think that that's the reason why. I think that maybe he wasn't available. And a lot of times, look, there are also things that do. They have limited budget also. I think certain people that they spend in, they fly in. I bet you Harrison Ford wasn't cheap to get out there, too. There are other things. And not that they couldn't have forked over an extra couple bucks to get Ewan McGregor out there. But maybe they're going to save him for another convention. Maybe they're going to bring him in for something else that they want to, down the line, bring him in. And maybe he just simply wasn't available to, to be there. And they didn't have any... They, they said, okay, do we're going to have... Liam Neeson said he can send something in. Sam Jackson's going to send something in. Do we, do we need Ewan to do it? Are the, the questions going to be out there about the Obi-Wan? That's the reason why I don't think he was there live in person is because they didn't have anything for him to talk about and everyone would have been asking him about the Obi-Wan movie. So they wanted wanted to scale back on it. They also wanted to put a lot of focus on Hayden Christensen. I think that the fact that Hayden Christensen hadn't been there in 12 years or whatever it was too, he did get um, a lot of, he got a great standing ovation where we were. They also interviewed him on the Star Wars show on the main stage. He got a lot of love there. Um, it was nice to see fans kind of embrace him again. And, and th there's a whole thing that we're going to talk about on Jedi Council with the how the prequels were this thing, like you used to say, there's the, that the, the family member that just came into town and you didn't want to see him, but you knew they were there. They were the still unemployed family. uncle that still lives in your grandmother's basement. Right. Yes. Well, I think that uncle is starting to get a little more table time now. Um, <laughs> and they're starting to give a couple more scraps. And I think that Star Wars fans in general are starting to accept, because even Star Wars is, is even pushing the prequels as part of the overall family. They weren't doing that two years ago at Star Wars Celebration. And I think Ewan McGregor is one of these guys that is going to be honored a lot more at, at upcoming events. What do you think, Schnepp? Well, uh, no one's mentioned Han Solo. You guys didn't see any footage of Han Solo. I know, but, but he coming. was there. 
But, but Harrison I, Ford was there. I mean, no, no, no. no. I'm, talking about, wasn't you I'm talking about the new Han Solo. Yeah. Right, yeah. He wasn't there. I think Ewan McGregor is going to show up in the new Han Solo movie. Really? And that, yeah, really. Cause why? It's, well, I mean, why not? It takes place before Obi-Wan dies. They've never met before. But they've though. never met. Well, he doesn't, they don't have to necessarily meet, but uh, Han Solo is aware of ah, that hocus pocus that you believe in, kids. I'm sure he's seen a, a, a lightsaber before. Han Solo. Because that's, that's not so far off another theory we've heard, and, and you and I have talked about that. Uh, they may not be wanting to roll out Hugh McGregor because maybe he actually appears in Episode Eight, and they don't want to give any I hint. Think that so that's, that's kind of what's happening with Episode it, Eight. I would say Episode Eight more so than, than Han Solo. If he shows up in Episode I mean, th we kind of already are guessing that Hayden is going to show up in Episode Eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how many Force Ghosts they're going to have a big party or something. I, you know, <laughs> well, I don't. Trip, I, I mean, don't. I don't really want to see that. I would yeah. much rather see an Obi Wan movie. But if I don't get an Obi Wan movie or an announcement, you got D twenty three. How long is this fortieth anniversary going on? Did it end or is it still going on? Well, I, mean, I, mean, I guess it lasts all year. Right, yeah. so it lasts all year. So D23 is also the 40th anniversary True. of Star Wars, so they got to save something. You're going to get that flavor for Han Solo, and they're going to announce that Obi-Wan thing. That's my guess. It's what like, do you think, Perry? I keep wanting to say to myself, just calm down, don't read too much into what goes on at conventions, and you make some really good points why it might mean nothing at all, but at the same time, I'm with you. This sticks out like a sore thumb to me. I find it very silly that they would have things like uh, a video from Liam Neeson and Sam Jackson, and even Which, if they with no production value, yeah. Sam Jackson was literally no. just like his <laughs> iPhone four, going, it's "Hey, everybody, <laughs> hi!" And that was basically. And no it. one even shot it for for him, at least. And one of them, you see him go to push the stop button, so <laughs> they easily could have asked you and McGregor to be like, "Hey, man, just like a quick, quick video for the fans." They didn't do that, and it feels very strange to me. I definitely think that we're going to see more Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan in something in the very near future. I think we're going to find out there was a reason for it. When, I don't know. And then I think we're going to all then go, oh, that's a pretty damn good reason. I think the episode eight um, reasoning is probably the best. If you're going to speculate on any of it, I think the episode eight potential cameo is is a good call. They're mm -hmm. secretly shooting the Obi-Wan movie right now. <laughs> it's well, the news MTV did an interview with Kathleen Kennedy yeah. and they brought up a potential Obi-Wan movie and while she didn't confirm it, she didn't exactly shoot it down and she said that they're they're kind of working on the creating process right now with the next standalone film and she said uh she she hopes it'll it'll be around the summer that they start the process of creating the film and revealing it to the public. That's so July. summer. That's, that's D23. I know. Lots <laughs> of possibilities out there.